Let's hear it. Make some noise. Denver G. Christian! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Denver G. Christian. The G's for gorgeous, obviously. <laughs> This is actually my first stand-up show. Actually, it's my second. Uh, I was a sole survivor of the other show. Everyone else died from uh, laughter and poison. <laughs> so uh, if you're having a good time tonight and think I'm funny, don't drink or eat anything during my performance. I'm single. I think I'm single because of my beauty. I'm like the sun, you see. You can't stare at me for too long, otherwise you will go blind. That's why if you reach underneath these seats tonight, you'll fair find a pair of ultra UV sunglasses. The same type they use when there's an eclipse. Because ladies, without that protection, there might be a total eclipse of the heart. <laughs> Talking to you. From the way you look at me. Now, obviously I'm not single because of my beauty. Uh, I'm not saying I'm ugly, but uh, the day I start modeling anything is the day people stop wearing clothes. I actually think the real reason is I have zero confidence with women. I'm out before I even start. If I'm at a club and I see a girl, I'll walk up to her, say hi. Before she even has a chance to say anything, I'll be like, hey, uh, I am so, so sorry. What was I thinking? I'm going to leave you alone now, but before I do, I'm going to buy you and that guy a drink. <laughs> he seems nice. Uh, I'm vegan. I know what you must be thinking. I know what you must be thinking. That man does not look vegan. In fact, he looks like he's just eaten some KFC. If you smell his breath, it probably smells like the 11 secret herbs and spices. 10, I should say, because salt has to be one of them. I'm not a vegan for your normal reasons, though. I, I don't care about the planet. And I don't care about animals. In fact, sometimes on the weekends, I like to murder animals just for fun. Don't worry, though, I don't eat them because that would be wrong. <laughs> the reason I actually started doing stand-up comedy is because I heard women find funny people attractive. I mean, I was funny before, but I had no proof. I had witnesses, but you can't really take them on dates. Being a stand-up comedian is actually not my dream. The fact is, I can't actually achieve my actual dreams. And being a stand-up comedian is not very hard, you know? You don't have to learn much, and it doesn't involve much physical exertion. It's not like a trade. Anyone can do it, as long as you have a throat. <laughs> I've, I've realized that I have absolutely no survival skills whatsoever. If I were to get lost in a large park or forest, I would die pretty much straight away. I have no idea which way is north. When people tell me they're from the northern suburbs, all I hear is, I live in a house. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, that's cool. <laughs> the news would be the worst, though. Like, local man got lost in the local park today, and it ended in tragic circumstances. The man got lost after he got separated from his group of friends. Survivors say he was only gone for five minutes. <laughs> Police authorities have opened up an investigation, though, because the man, aged 30, from Noble Park North, was a prime suspect in many unsolved crimes in the area, with possible links to the Apex Gang, and also the notorious Cookamonga Cracker Killers, <laughs> a.k.a. the KKK. Has anyone ever thrown up while doing stand-up comedy on stage? Just imagine I have a chuck and then you have a chuck. Next thing you know, someone else is having a chuck. Everyone's chucking. People are on the floor rolling around covered in their own vomit. They ask how the show went. Yeah, look, it was a one-of-a-kind performance. People were out of their seats. If I had to describe the performance in one word, I would say it was sick. <laughs> I went to Subway the other day. Uh, after I placed my order, I took my cup, walked over to the drink machine. As I was pouring my cup full of Solo, the lady at the counter said, would you like your sub toasted? I said, yeah, sure, why not? 
So I lifted my cup to the sky and said, to my 12-inch sub, <laughs> may you fill my body with nutrients and sustenance. And may you exit my body with respect, grace, and dignity. I'm talking to you, jalapenos. Yeah, yeah. I've been known to give terrible presents. There's one time for my friend's birthday, I gave him a loaf of bread. Told him, on the card I wrote, you deserve every single slice. I mean, I could have gotten him a bottle of alcohol that he probably could have drunk that same night. But nah, son, okay? My loaf of bread will feed you for days. You can get like 10 sandwiches out of that. In a way, I'm like, you know who. But I've turned one gift into 10 gifts. The gifts of sandwiches. Now, for everyone's birthday, everyone's getting a loaf of bread. Some friends, I give them white bread. Some friends, I give them brown bread. Some friends get multi-grain bread. But my closest friends, my best friends, they get them Helga's bread. Because that shit's expensive. Now, all my friends call me sandwich clothes. <laughs> You know the upgrade of the 50 dangerous level crossings? Well, I was in Clayton the other day, and they were doing one there. I was stuck there for so long that I actually lost the will to live. <laughs> All I could think of doing was driving into the car in front of me, putting it in reverse, driving into the car behind me, doing this about five or six times so I can have enough room, to drive past the cars, maybe clip one of those traffic controllers with the slow sign, and then hit the gas and drive straight into the oncoming train. I thought to myself, I thought to myself, I can't be the only one having these thoughts. They are doing these upgrades everywhere. What if it becomes a thing? What if the death toll spirals, having the opposite effect the government intended? Would they then stop? making it safe? The sites that were done before, would they roll those back? Make them dangerous again? You can see the ad on TV now. The downgrade of 50 safe level crossings. Brought to you by the Victorian state government, spoken by RJ Bracken. You know what always annoyed me? Why do I have to know who said it? Never ever in my entire life will I be like, Hey, um, you, know that, uh, you know that new project they're doing? Um, the Victorian state government? And then someone else will be like, Oh, that one spoken by RJ Brecken. <laughs> yeah, that will never happen, RJ. No one gives a shit, man. I'd rather not know. I'd rather keep some things a mystery. If I see it on TV, I'd be like, I wonder who said that. He has a voice of an angel. I must find out. Ladies and gentlemen, you all been great. This whole set was spoken by Denver Gorgeous Christian. I'm out.